Hi AP Couch students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and I wanted to bring you a video that really would be geared towards more of let's say the college Calc 2 student who might be learning about the shell method which is a very cool method that you can use to find the volume of a solid of revolution. This video is kind of designed to piggyback on the knowledge that you might have gained by using the disk and washer methods. Now I want to make sure that this is very clear that if you're an AP calculus student, whether you take AB or BC, that this is a method that would never be tested on the advanced placement exam. You could always use it if it made the process of finding a volume a little bit easier, but it's kind of a more of an extension that a lot of advanced placement calculus teachers in high school use. But those Calc 2 students in college, this might be a great video for you guys. So let's take a look at the shell method. And so as you can see, here's my notes tempo that I use for my students at my school. And really the shell method, it's kind of named after something that doesn't really look like a shell. Uh, sometimes I call this the piping method where you have like this section of pipe, like a PVC pipe. That's that white pipe that you can find in hardware stores that's used a lot for plumbing jobs. And it's basically taking several sections of these open, sort of hollowed out cylinders and stacking them together, putting many inside of each other, putting some more around this one, and creating this awesome three-dimensional shape. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how the formulas are derived for the shell method. It's not really the purpose of this video. I can make another video later on that kind of bridges the gap between those things, but essentially it's very much kind of connected to this idea that you see on this page. Now, if you check out the description of the video below, I will put a link to this particular document in case you want to download it and have access to this particular page. But for our purpose in this video, we're going to return to the actual idea of the shell method. We're going to take a look at the formula. And if we talk about a vertical axis of revolution, which is what I want to go through first, we're looking at a formula that looks like this here that's now shaded in this lovely green color. Whoa, okay, well that looks a little bit different. And again, I'm kind of working on the assumption that you are a little bit familiar with the disk method and you're a little bit familiar with the washer methods. And this thing doesn't look anything like the disk or the washer methods. And so one of the things that you're going to notice initially in the formula is that the constant contains a 2 in front of the pi, not just regular pi like we used to see with disk and washer. So that's the first thing that you'll have to adapt to. And then the second thing, obviously, this integrand is very, very, very different. It consists of p of x and h of x. And this h of x is something that's really not too unfamiliar to us, right? This h of x is our good old friend, the height of our representative rectangle. And so to kind of recap the situation here, you've got a shaded region, right? Let's say that you've got this area that's bounded by this curve. This curve would be some function's name. And you're going to take that particular curve. Uh, uh, region, let's say, and you're going to spin it around the y-axis. So you're going to create this three-dimensional shape that, yeah, I can't even begin to draw. It just, it's laughable if I try to draw these things, but you've got this kind of three-dimensional dome shape, if you will, that's emanating uh, from this revolution. So the h of x is a good friend. He's our typical equation of the the curve, right? The top of the curve minus the bottom of the curve, the bottom of course being zero, is just going to be the function, usually it's called f of x, for that particular problem. Now the p of x is a little different. The p of x is going to be what's called our radius. And I'm going to write the word radius here, and by radius I'm talking about the distance that you're going to be from your axis of revolution to, say, the very center of that representative rectangle. And we denote that as P of X. I know that sounds a little weird. Like, why not call it R of X? Well, we could call it anything we want. I like to use P so that I don't get it confused with the things that we did with, say, the washer method or the disk method. 
And of course our DX that's sitting at the end that really doesn't seem like it does much is really taking the place of the delta x which is the thickness of that particular representative rectangle and and that really essentially completes the whole problem for us um, again if you wanted to get a little bit more insight into you know how this particular formula is arrived at uh, you can check out another video but for the purpose of this video you're going to be able to you know take and, and tackle any kind of homework problem that you might see in your class. One of the things that's really important to remember is that when you're talking about the shell method for a vertical axis of revolution, the representative rectangle that you draw, that would be this guy here in orange, is now going to be parallel to the axis of rotation. Shell parallel. You like it? You see what I did there? It's very important that you remember that little mnemonic. Whenever we did this back with washers and discs, our representative rectangle was always drawn perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So, as you can see, if we did have a horizontal axis of revolution, as you see over here to the right, our representative rectangle would have to be drawn horizontally and thus be parallel to that x-axis. And then that kind of creates a situation where the entire expression is going to be uh, have to be set up with respect to y. So that's the big difference there whenever you have a horizontal axis of revolution. Hopefully this is kind of getting the, the ball rolling and we can take a look at our first problem. Let's take a uh, gander and see what example one has to say. It says, find the volume of a solid formed in quadrant one only by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equal x minus x cubed and the x-axis we're going to do so about the y-axis. Now the problem here says to sketch and graph and draw any representative rectangles. I've gone ahead and used a graphing calculator to sketch this curve. It, the video is not about how to sketch that curve. If you're wondering, gosh, how would I sketch that curve? Literally, I would just make a bunch of values in a table and just go to town and, and do the best that I could. You're not really needing a beautiful Rembrandt, is what I call it, uh, of the graph. You don't have a need for this perfect painting, if you will. All you need is just some kind of a sketch that you can kind of uh, 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 draw your rectangle through and get your bearings, uh, basically. So here is that region in the first quadrant, right, bounded by the curve. And we're going to take that region, we're going to spin it around the y-axis. Really, all this other stuff is really not important. If it bothers you, hey, I can use a white pen yeah, boy, wouldn't that be cool if we all had white pens that we could use? And we can get rid of that, and then it's not going to be in a way. All right, so here we go. So <clears throat> if we were going to set up our representative rectangle, we remember that it must be drawn parallel, right? Shell parallel. And so this top to bottom distance is going to be our H of X. And yes, th this is a delta x width here, right? Finger and thumb test. The sizing up of that rectangle does give us a width of a delta x, change in x, which means that our integral is going to be set up with respect to x, dx at the end. Now for the p of x, <clears throat> and this is the part that a lot of times students make much more difficult than they should. There's a special relationship, very consistent, that happens anytime that you're revolving with respect to the y axis. And that is that your radius is always going to be x. Yes, think about that for just a second. No matter where we decided to put this representative rectangle, he is only going to be a distance of x from the y-axis. It's an arbitrary measure. And so that will make our setup hopefully pretty clear. Our volume, let's switch to this dark blue, our volume would be 2 pi, right, that's the constant that goes out in front as the formula dictates, multiplied by the p of x, right, that would be the radius, right, from our formula, p of x, multiplied by the height, and the height is just the x minus x cubed equation, technically minus 0. Well, it's probably pretty silly to say minus zero. You could if it helps to 
get that top minus bottom vibe going with the problem. But that's really all that we need here. And of course, we're going to integrate with respect to x. Now, that's all we need for the integrand. Now, we need limits of integration, of course. And we're going to find those the way that we always find them. Make sure that you remember you're dealing with, with respect to x. And so it's these two x values where your shaded region begins and ends that will dictate your boundaries or limits of integration. And now, from this point on, the problem becomes fairly straightforward because to integrate this particular expression, we are going to have to multiply the x through. We're going to have to distribute that x. We get x squared minus x to the fourth, of course, with respect to x. <clears throat> and now we have just a very simple polynomial expression to find the antiderivative of. And, of course, that would be x to the third over 3 minus x to the fifth over 5. We'll still use those boundaries from 1 to 0. And then we end up plugging in our 1. And that will produce 1 third, right? 1 cubed is 1. Minus 1 fifth, because 1 to the fifth is 1. And I don't really see much of anything going on when we plug in 0. And so we have a un an unsimplified answer that will work for us. However, if you want to simplify this to make it pretty, perhaps you're working through multiple choice type of assessments. We can get the common denominator of 15. Uh, we would need a 5 here. We would need a 3 in that numerator. And so we could see 2 fifteenths as that result. And if we want to really simplify it nicely, we would have 4 pi over 15. Now, before I close out this video, I want to point something out that's kind of sometimes underappreciated. If we were to go back to this problem, and I'm going to kind of erase all of my work and my setup here, and just remember that we do have this shaded region. If we were going to try to use a different approach to find this volume, like the washer method, something is not going to be very pleasant. So the washer method would probably be the choice because you can see that your representative rectangle initially that starts from the axis of revolution goes through this unshaded space and thus that would end up denoting your R function, your capital R. <clears throat> but then we would have to find another length of a rectangle that would be def uh, that referred to as the lowercase r. Well, this forces us to have to set this up with respect to y. And that is a problem. And the reason it is a problem is because this equation cannot be solved for y. Or I should say it, it's already solved for y. It can't be solved for x. Pretty rough going if we want to try to solve that for x. And so that's when this shell method becomes so powerful because it's really your only course of action in order to find these volumes. Again, a problem like this could not appear, say, on an advanced placement exam for you high school students, but college students, you're likely to see these all the time. Anyway, I hope this certainly helps. Stick around for more videos about the shell method and other applications of integration. If you like what you see, be sure to hit uh, the subscribe button to my channel. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.